So today we're going to uh, see how uh, one service can talk with another service in uh, my, uh, in Spring Web Flux if you're trying to build a micro ar service architecture backend. So um, what we are going to do today is we're going to uh, do some sign up thing. So we have two services right now. This is this is the authentication service. This is going to ha uh, handle signing in and signing up. And then we also have a gateway my service. This is going to be like the entry point, and this is going to act as uh, an entry point for the client to use. So you can think of this as the main controller, and it's going to uh, make calls to other services as per the needs. So um, so the first thing that we would like to do is we are going to go back to our authentication uh, service and we are going to create a sign up function which is going to uh, create a new record in our database with the email and the password. So let's create our function now in our authentication service. Pub public mono, we are going to return a mono and it's going to be a response entity and we're just going to return a string so you know uh, like the information if it was successful or not I'm just gonna call this sign up and uh, the request body is going to be of user entity so this is an object that, that we made and this object simply contains the uh, email in the credential field okay so um, instead of writing the code in here all of the logics um, I have a different service called the, the user service this is where I, I write all of the logics it's to you know separate the controller and the business layer so let's make a new function public mono it's also going to make a return a response entity of type string and we're gonna call this sign up and it's gonna take in user uh, entity as the parameter so first we're gonna do a simple check user.get email is equal to no or um, user.get cred is equal to no if any of these is no we're just gonna return mono dot uh, just bad request bad request and the body is going to be a uh, invalid email invalid fields yeah, that sounds better okay there we go so what we are doing is we're checking if the email or the credential is null and if they are null we're just returning a bad request respond entity and the body is just going to be a string and that string is going to say invalid fields but if that's not the case we wanna uh, make use of, of our repo so repo is another service we have over here and uh, this is basically to interact with the database so we, we are just going to save the user we got as the parameter and uh, we're going to save it in the database okay perfect and we're going to store it in a uh, user is equal to okay, there we go okay, I'm just going to call it saved uh, user okay. okay so it has been saved we, we, we are going to check if this is valid if saved user is equal is not equal to no, we are gonna return uh, mono dot just response entity and the status is gonna be okay and the body is gonna be uh, gn it is signed up okay there we go or else if we if the if we fail to sh save the object we're just going to return a response entity with internal server and the body it's just going to be something went wrong when trying to add record to database okay there we go perfect okay yeah um so this is it now we are going to go back to our main controller and we are going to make use of it auth sorry uh what, what was that service called again oh uh, wait a minute it's this one okay there's the user service dot sign up and we are going to send the user as the argument and we're just gonna return this okay that is uh, it this is our uh, sign up and we are going to mark it or annotate it with uh, a post mapping of sign up perfect okay there we go 
So sign up is done. Uh, just give me a minute. Someone's calling me. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, call the service from our API gateway. So let's go to our other uh, project. This is our gateway. So this is our uh, gateway service. This is like the entry point where the client is going to uh, be interacting. And we have an auth controller that's going to be talking to the authentication service um, you know uh, like for task like signing in and signing up okay uh, so we already have sign in so this is it it's just going to uh, make some calls to the authentication service and generate a what do you call that a JWT token so we are going to make another function for sign up response entity and it's gonna return a string as well okay perfect and we're gonna call this sign up and it's gonna be a post mapping your all is gonna be sign up okay perfect and um, press the body user entity yeah. okay there we go so uh, we have to make uh, we have to create a new function in the service so we have sign in, sign in over here. Oh, we already have a sign up here. Okay, so uh, to show you how it's done, I'm gonna like redo everything. Okay, so public, uh, it's gonna return a mono response entity, and it's gonna be a type string. Okay, perfect, and it's gonna be called sign up, and it's gonna accept a user entity as the parameter. Okay, there we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a web client. To do so, we are gonna make use of the web client object class, and we're gonna call web client dot create. And the URL uh, and inside the create function, you're, you're going to pass a string as the uh, you know URL. So like it can be local host you know, something like this, and then sign up things like that so for me I have it all stored up in one single class um, yeah I've store, stored every single URL in this uh, static class and I'm going to make use of it so it's gonna be microservice uh, URLs dot auth is the main URL and it's gonna be board and plus microservices dot sign up there we go so technically the URL is going to look like local host and that service is going to run in port 2000 and then auth slash uh, sign up this is what it's going to look like on a local machine okay so uh, the uh, the URL is done and we are just going to do client dot sorry client dot post so this is the method uh, like, like you know the method of request it can be a post it can be a get it can be a boot or something like that for it but in our case it, it's post and we are gonna set the body you, so you can use body or you can use body value the only difference is if you use body you have to pass in a mono object but if you pa uh, if you use body value you can uh, just pass in a value uh, just sorry just pass in an object so it really depends on what you need if you already have a uh, the object then you can uh, just pass it or if you don't know when you're going to get an object for example it has to be retrieved from any other services then you can make use of the body function in our case we're going to make use of body val value because we al al already have the user object with us and after that we're going to send this request to the uh, what do you call that to the authentication service to and to do so we are gonna call this exchange to mono you can use exchange to mono if you're expecting a, a mono response or you can do exchange to flux if you're expecting a list of you know a values so in our case it's just one single value a string so we, we are just gonna do exchange to mono and yeah and we do, and we are gonna return this value right here okay perfect exchange to mono is going to gi uh, give us the ability to start a lambda function and that's what we're gonna do exactly. This client response is going to have a bunch of inf information that's pretty important to us. 
first thing is the uh, mono object so it's gonna be client response dot uh, body to mono and the type is gonna be string dot class so th the string dot class signifies that the object we're getting back is going to be of type string and how do we know it's string because that's how we uh, designed it in our authentication service like have a look at this so it's mono and it, and it's returning a response entity but the main body is going to be of type string so that's it okay so um yeah we have uh, we are getting back a, a string and we're gonna save it a, as a value right so let's, let's just call it a message message mono or something like that okay and we are just gonna return return message mono and then we're gonna go to the next line dot flat map okay this is going to start another lambda right here and this is gonna okay there you go so inside this lambda what we wanna really do is we're gonna return a re response entity because that what that's what we need but since we're using flat map we have to make use of uh, what do you call that a mono object so we need to return a mono object if you were you making use of map you don't really need to return a mono object you can just re return a response entity so mono dot just uh, and just and then the body is going to be response entity dot status code is going to we are going to take this status code from our client response that status code so we are going to get it from there and the body sorry um, I think I messed it up and yeah I, I, I did mess it up dot body is going to be the S okay so this S represents the body and yeah that is it so this is what we are returning and let me see what the problem is uh, it's, a bit, it's never been being used again okay, so that's not, not an issue we are, we are going to resolve that so um, to recap what we have done we created a web client and we passed a URL as the parameter then we are using the client to specify that it's a post request we're specifying the body and if you need to you can specify the header headers as well and I did that in uh, line number 24 right here for another function for this for the sign up function so just like that you can uh, set up your header if you want to and then there's exchange to mono which is basically sending out the request to mono and the mono signifies that we are getting an object that's just one object and exchange to flux is going to be used when you're expecting a list of objects so inside the lambda we are uh, storing the uh, value of the body and we specify the type of value we are getting back in our case it's string the class and uh, and then we are making use of that uh, body and then returning a new mono object and if you want to use map you can you do so and then just do you know uh, instead of doing this you can just do response to just okay this, yeah. you don't really need just okay and yeah you can do this as well like it's to it's totally fine but you know I like to use flat map because it it lets me have control of uh, creating my own m mono which I kind of prefer over uh, you know being supplied a mono itself so uh, yeah that's basically it so we are going to have uh, call this function in our authentication controller right here so we, we are just gonna do auth service dot sign up and uh, we, are, we are going to send our user object as the argument and the response we get is going to be of respond entity of type string and that's exactly what this thing is going to return and we, we are just going to return the value that's being returned by sign up function so um there it is okay um, so let's test it out we are going to start the server and the server is going to run on port 1000 so that's what we're going to make use of okay and let's start our authentication ser server as well uh, sorry I'm in service my brain is not working today so uh, this, is, this is running on port 2000 so we are not really going to be uh, interacting with port it, uh, 2000 because this is supposed to be an internal service and the client will have no idea of this so uh, yeah this is uh, postman we are going to use this to check if our APIs are working properly so we are in local ho host and the port is 1000 which means that the gateway is going to be the one that's uh, going to be at work and then uh, 
we are going to go to this specific URL auth slash sign up which means that it's going to go to this auth uh, controller class because that's what's mapped with uh, this one this auth uh, URL and inside that we are going to call the sign up function which is this and the sign up is then going to call this service function and the service function is basically going to create a client and use it to uh, talk with authentication service the authentication service is then um, going to get triggered uh, and it's going to call this sign up function right here and the sign up function has its own sort of service function it's called sign up and the sign up is basically going to interact with the database and it's going to save it and then return the response you know so yeah it's just things like that so let's um, see if it's working so uh, everything's looking fine we have the body we have the email and the cred that's exactly what our body needs and if you want to know uh, if it's if that's the body you can check out the request body uh, annotated parameter and you can check uh, the object itself we have an email and a cred okay so uh, let's send the request and we have we, we get successfully signed up as our um, what do you call it as our uh, response body and the status code is 200 okay and the time it took is like uh, 363 milliseconds and the size is like 101 byte so um, that is it I hope you now understand uh, how uh, one service can talk with another service in spring web flux um, yeah thank you everybody